Shalom, shalom. Kahalayim la. Yahweh b'Hashem Yerushai b'Hashem Mekal Kodash. The Baalish of the elders and apostles who gave me also to teach him well. Peace and salutations be to the elect. But that tells me I'm going to cheat from the prophets in Babylon camp here in Tampa, Florida. And this lesson is going to be going into who hath resisted his will. And along the lines of that because the Lord sends out the word and you can't resist. And no one can resist, really. I mean, if it's the Lord's will for something to be accomplished in his way, it's going to be accomplished in his way. There's nothing that you can really do about that. <coughs> this is the book of Isaiah, chapter 55, and verse... I'll start at verse 7. Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts, and let him return unto the Lord, Yehoshim Yoshai, and he will have mercy upon him, and to our power, for he will abundantly, for he will abundantly pardon. So, forsake that wicked way and that unrighteousness, and return unto the Lord. You know, the Lord will have mercy upon you. you just stop living the way you live. You know. Um, he will, it says he will abundantly pardon. You know so. You got to forsake the way that you thought was right in your mind and follow after the ways of the Lord because that's what's ultimately right at the end of the day. And there's nothing you or I can do about it. You can't change the ways of the Lord. You can't change the ways that things were set up. You know, you can't have a bucking up spirit against you or a bucking up spirit on you as well, man. You got to let the Lord's plans play out. Everybody stands in their lot. Or would it be, uh, you know, a man of the Lord or, or a man of his, after his own way, after his own heart? It says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts. So the Lord's thoughts are not our thoughts. We think um, on a carnal level, but the Lord thinks on a heavenly level, you know, which is beyond the carnal level. We think it's like our minds are in a box because we're literally in a box, which is the world, the earth. But the Lord is minds. He's created all these things. He's far out. You know, he dwells in another dimension and all dimensions are subject to him. And he understands all things and every one of them. But we can only understand the things that are in front of our face and barely that, man. Scripture say you don't even understand all everything that you see. Let me see if I can grab it all, actually. This is a summary of the one. It says, Proverbs 5 and 6, Lest thou shouldest ponder the path of life, her ways are movable, that thou canst not know them. All right, and let me see if I can find this one. can't find it so let me describe this one instead all right it's a book of ecclesiastes chapter 43 and verse um 31 it says who hath seen him that he might tell us 
and who can magnify him as he is. So we'll see how much you shy. They can tell us and explain to us what he looks like as he is. Explain to us in words the glory of the Lord, Yahweh Shemel Shai. You can't. Huh? It says, There are yet hid greater things than these be, for we have seen but a few of his works. So there are hid greater things than the things that we know and things that we've seen. As scripture say right here, For we have seen but a few of his works. We've only seen a few things that the Lord has done, a few of his creations. Try to imagine something or try to put into words something that you've never seen before. You know, I'm doing a lesson in my room and in front of me is my TV. But if TV was never named TV or if I've never seen one before, you know, we never heard of a TV before. You never heard of the technology that goes through it, any of that. How would you describe it? You know, but how much more with the things of the Lord that, that's been hidden from us that we have not seen yet? We can name the things in the earth, but how can you name the things in, in the heavens? <laughs> you know, um. For the Lord hath made all things, and to the godly hath he given wisdom. All right, so let's get back to Isaiah 55 and 8. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my ways. So like, yeah, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. So our thought process is on a much, much, much lower level than even coming anywhere near the Lord's understanding. It says, For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. So the Lord is beyond us in every way, spectrum, and measurement possible. Because what? He's the creator of all things. And as heaven is high above earth, so are all things in heaven higher above all things in earth. You know? You can't begin to fathom. Um... I remember uh, the description of an angel being described with wings and pretty much just about every feather had an eyeball on it, man. You know, we only got two eyes. We're born with two eyes and these things dim as we grow with age. Uh, what I know is an angel with uh, wings full of eyes, you know. How can you get around the sight of the vision of this angel? You can't. Oh, it's like all things are in his sight, man. <laughs> you know, but um, it says so are my ways higher than your ways. So you got to just trust in the Lord. You got to trust in the process of Yahweh Shemuel Shai. Everything happens with purpose, you know, and it's because the Lord purposed it, not because you purposed it. Um, it's because the Lord has purposed it. You know, there's nothing that you can truly do uh, to amend or change that, to fix that. You know. Um, scriptures say who can make straight what the Lord has made, hath made crooked you know roughly paraphrasing so the path and the things that happen in life are set on a guaranteed way that's supposed to happen and there's nothing you can do about it no matter how you go about it you can see the future and act differently try to act according to changing the future but it's still going to end up the same way you know no matter how you slice it. You know, you can set up things to counter what you saw in the future, but it's still going to come out the same way, you know. I won't for four call him like a Shmuel Shai. So that just goes to show you that, hey, no matter how you do it, hey, you can be doing something to counteract something you've seen happen in the future. And the things that you're doing is actually what causes it to happen that way, you know. You can't stop the Lord, man. You can't stop his will. It says, Romans 9 and 19, Thou wilt say then unto me, Why doth he yet find fault? For who hath resisted his will? You know, so, so it's like, Why does the Lord yet find fault with men? You know, why is this man in trouble or this man in trouble for this or that? Well, he can't even resist the will of the Lord. Yeah, but shall shy. It says, Nay, but, O man, who art thou that repliest against you? How but shall shy? Who shall the things... Shall the thing formed say to him that formed it, Why hast thou made me? Why hast thou made me thus? You know, why you made me this way? It says, Hath not the potter power over the clay of the same lump to make one vessel unto honor and another unto dishonor? So the Lord makes what he wants. You know, he can make a toilet um, 
or a trash can to throw things away that he doesn't want or he doesn't like and he can make a, um, you know, a, a vase of honor, you know, or a, what do you call it? Household treasures that people just don't touch. You ever seen someone, you come to someone's house and they say, oh, don't touch this. Be careful. It's a household tre uh, treasure passed down by generations, passed down to the family. You know, don't let this break or, you know, don't even touch it or, you know, so it's the same thing. The Lord can make um, vessels into honor and vessels into dishonor. The primary example is Jacob and Esau. Jacob was made into honor. Esau was made into dishonor. Even the world dishonors Esau because of what he's done. You see, this guy has a word in his hands and what has he done with it? He's caused the world to mourn. He's destroyed everything in his, in his in his pathway, you know. But the Lord made Jacob to what they will ultimately rule at the end of the day, forever and in righteousness. It says, of the same lump to make one vessel into honor and another into dishonor. What if? Um, I asked it on that. So uh, there you have it, man. It's, the Lord does what He wants, and you can't you can't resist His will. Who hath resisted His will? Yeah, at the end of the day, man. You know, it's the creator. We're subject to him no matter what. You know, so play your part. That's why the Lord hates pride because pride is when a man gets beside himself thinking that he's, he can order things, order his life the way he wants to order his life. Scriptures say uh, man's goings are of the Lord. How can a man then understand his own way? You can't even understand your own way. You don't even understand why you go here or go there. Why you wake up to do this or do that. Why you go to sleep after this and that, you know. Or why you do this before you go to sleep. You know, you can't understand it. The Lord guided you to do these things. That's why we got to give thanks to the Lord, Yahweh Shemil Shai, every day. Because he guided us to this truth. You know, he guided us to pray. He guided us to um, be charitable, be loving. You know, he put us on this path to be the, the men that we are. You know, and hopefully we can be accepted in his sight. Okay, but the Lord has put those on the path to destruction that he wants to destroy and he put those on the path to salvation that he wants to save and there's nothing you or i can do about it if you want to be destroyed but the lord got you on a path to salvation you can't be destroyed if you want to be you know saved but the lord got you on a path to uh <laughs> destruction you can't be saved you have to be destroyed you know at the end of the day all israel gonna be saved yet some are gonna most are gonna be saved through the fire they're gonna have to go through the fire it's the book of Isaiah, chapter 55, verse 11. It says, So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void. So whatever the Lord speaks into existence, it prospereth. Okay, it, it, it achieves what it was sent to do. You know, the Lord can say, let this be, and then it there it is. <laughs> he said, let there be light, and then there is light. Let there be darkness, and there is darkness. Okay, let there be beasts and cattle and, and fowls and, and um, fish, you know. And there, and there it was. Okay, so it says, It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. How many of us can say that our word is, is not going to return unto us void? You know, how many of us can actually say that? You know, we're not the Lord. Yahbash me Shai. Scriptures say, Neither can you make one hair in your head gray. Okay, or add one cubit to your stature. You're not the Lord. Okay, we're just men and fleshly bodies. We are subject to many things. We're subject to time. We're subject to, uh, we're subject to the, the the weather. We're subject to uh, sickness and ailments. We're subject to sin. We're subject to vanity. We're subject to many things, man. But the thing that we are most importantly subject to is Yahweh Bashem Shai. Okay, the Creator, through His and uh, through His Son and through the Rakakwadash, man. We are subject to that, no matter how you slice it. So how can you then understand your own way? Things happen in your life because the Lord has set them up to happen. And the way that they happen, they were set up to happen that way. Either to, to, you know, build you or destroy you. Whatsoever it may be, <clears throat> be it's always of the Lord's will. And it be that way. Otherwise, it won't happen. You know, scriptures say a bird shall not fall from the, uh, you know, not, not, not one sparrow shall fall from heaven hit the floor without the Lord giving the green light for it too. Scripture say by him doth all things consist. So hey, the breath in your lungs consists. Can you continue to breathe because the Lord gives the word for it. You know, he, he never says shut it down. <laughs> you know, 
it's the, everything has its appointed time and its appointed date just as the end has its appointed time and appointed date and the Lord's arrival Yahushua's arrival has its appointed time and date and it cannot be fixed any time earlier nor any time later than that appointed date man okay so be patient be calm you know uh lean not to your own understanding may not hasten the time of trouble all these scriptures are to comfort you to show you that you cannot do anything against the lord's will you know you have to uh accept it be more accepting okay you want the lord to accept you then be more accepting to what he has in store for you be more accepting to his will okay and the best thing you can possibly do in your life is live a humble life, meek and humble. And the Lord have mercy upon you. Seek the Lord, Yahweh Shemir Oshai in thy youth. You know, when you have the strength to just get up and, and go and fight for the name of the Lord, Yahweh Shemir Oshai. You know, because the evil days will come. Okay, and the night will come when you won't be able to do those things anymore. All right, so, hey, the only thing I can guarantee is that <clears throat> you can only you can't go wrong taking the low route trusting the Lord Yahushua Shai and allowing his will to be accomplished upon you you know that doesn't give you the authority to be a nigga because some dudes say well if it's the Lord will for me to be destroyed I'm gonna be destroyed if, if I'm a two thirds it's the Lord will for me to be a two thirds shit I'm gonna just live like a two third then you know that's a nigga way of thinking man you know that's a beastly way of thinking Okay, we call ourselves the hopeful late because we hope to be of that number. So we make we do our, uh, you know, we put in our due diligence to show ourselves um, uh, as trying out for that number. You know, you got something called tryouts, you know, for um, you got something called tryouts for anything, just about anything. You, whether you go to a job interview or whatever it may be, they put you through training as, and that's the tryout period. They're trying you out to see if they're pretty much like you can just say trying. You're being tried right now to see if you can, can be accepted for that job or f to see if you can be accepted for that sport. You're being tried. And it's the same thing with their walks, man. We're being tried to see if we can be accepted into salvation, man. To see if we can be accepted into the elect, that number. You know, we dare not make ourselves at that number, but we sure hope to be. So what? What do we do? We take on the works and put on the works that men that we know where of those number we're doing man <laughs> you know that's that's the only way we know that's the only way we can feel comfortable going to sleep at night man is knowing as is, is trying our best to be at that number okay but um i truly hope this lesson was edifying to you i came and i to listen to truth and sincerity until next time yesterday i give all glory honor and praises unto yahweh